Greetings. Hope everybody's doing well. Uh, there seems to be a little bit of confusion as of lately, as one, to the things that I share freely on Facebook. Um, and like I keep telling people, there is no substitution for reading. So people go, do you practice law? I do not practice law. Um, and people say, well, uh, you have a law firm you could refer me to, you know? No, I don't. I don't. Because I understand what lawyers are. Um, and unfortunately, most lawyers are incompetent. There are some out there that know the truth. But I've had them flat out tell me they will not assist because it will cost them everything. And they mean everything. I suspect if you found a knowledgeable lawyer who was ready to retire, he might help you on a case where he sees the potential of making 15 to $30 million and he would get 30 to 40% of it. And the judges would be all nice and nice to him and tip his hat on his way out the fucking door because he's been a good servant to their system. I can see that potentially happening. But the lawyers that I've talked to that actually know what's going on, they won't look me in the eyes anymore. All right? <clears throat> so when people say, is there a lawyer out there that can help me? No, I don't believe so. Even in consumer law, which there are lawyers out there that are really good at consumer law, and uh, they advocate for the consumer, all right? Their bias is towards the consumer, which is awesome. But even they themselves don't fully understand the law. Uh, I would say they're closer than most criminal attorneys, um, but they themselves are still limited by what they've been taught uh, and what they can do in the court. Remember, they're all officers of the court. It's a business, all right? And they get paid handsomely for controversy. It's kind of like being a doctor. You don't get paid when you cure your patient. You get paid when you treat the symptoms and your patient continues to come back time and time and time again. And then, to boot, they're rewarded by the pharmaceutical company for pushing new pharmaceuticals that have new patents on them so they can ramp up the price. You'll notice most patents on pharmaceuticals last five years, 10 years, maybe even 15 years. And then as soon as the patent falls off, well, there'll be 15 different generic models of that molecular structure of the chemically laden shit that merely treats your symptom. And everybody and their dogs making it. Jamaica, Kenya, fucking China, right? So what's the pharmaceutical company do? They immediately create something else alter it molecularly in their structure and then they patent it and voila they've got a new one and they send their little lobbyist representatives out to every doctor's office every fucking hospital everybody that will listen to them and say hey we got this new product we'd really appreciate it if you push it and if you push it there's a kickback for you you get five percent six percent of every fucking order or prescription that you issue to treat these symptoms with this pill instead of the other one okay because the other one no longer generates enough money because you can get it generically. It's no longer protected under copyright, patent, and trademark. Okay? That's how it works. <clears throat> With the law, the law has been well established from the beginning of time. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was good. All right? <clears throat> the law is simple. Do no evil, cause no harm, honor your contracts. If you have made a mistake, please correct it. Be honorable. Handle your things privately before you air them publicly. All right? In other words, don't just run out and create a suit without ever have given the other party an opportunity to correct their presumable mistake. It may have been intentional, but we have to presume the opposite, all right? To deny one thing is to admit a thousand others. So people say, uh, so you don't practice law. No, I've never practiced law a day in my fucking life. It's taken me a little bit to figure it out, but I've never practiced law, and I never will. And I'll never go to law school. I'll never fucking sign up to be a bar rat 
because I understand what they're doing. They're attorning property. Property, unbeknownst to most people, has two forms. Two, pay attention. One is physically tangible property. They call it general tangibles, all right? Coins, physical possessions, all that shit. And then there's the intangible rights, okay? So this is like a security interest. You can't touch it, taste it, smell it, or feel it, but it's there. It's like the right to breathe, all right? It's not written anywhere, but you have an untangible uh, uh, right to breathe, which means you can't catch it, you can't trap it, you can't keep, it's just there. And you have to know your rights or you don't have any rights. That's what it boils down to. Police officers are policy enforcers. Statutes, codes, rules, and regulations, all right, I'm being very specific here, are nothing more than legislative edicts, which are bills of attainder in the venue of commerce. They're penalizing you, and the penal code has a penal sum for which penal bonds are generated. New money on account. All right? <clears throat> ah, it's so hard to explain this to people in layman's terms so they understand it. It's frustrating at times. I'm not the most brilliant guy in the world. I, I'll promise you that. I'm not any better than the rest of you. I'm not any more intelligent than you guys. I see things in a different light because of the way I chose to live my life and come up out of her, right? We're supposed to ascend of the mind and come up out of her. To be on the earth and not of this world. As the world was given to Lucifer, ladies and gentlemen. And that's a fact. So, attorneys practice deviling, a twisting and manipulation of the wor words. They cast spells using blacks, black magic, black laws dictionary. You know what's fascinating about my studies is when I started to study the Latin language, I was really curious why they always use Latin in court proceedings, in documents, because the language purported to be spoken in this country and all contracts that are binding is to be English. But then as I started to study the English language, I realized that it's just a bastardized language. It has words that have multiple meanings, okay? It has a way of being utilized for nefarious acts, to confuse, to cause people uh, the lack of understanding or knowledge, which brings me back to the Bible, which says, Woe unto you lay lawyers, for you lay men with burdens grievous to be born, yet ye yourself not touch them with one finger, and woe unto you lawyers, for you have the key of knowledge, yet you hinder your fellow brother from entering in, and ye yourself not enter into. Okay? Black's Law Dictionary, if you look at Black's Law Dictionary, it's funny, if you actually get a hard copy, there's a little key down at the bottom, right-hand corner. Black's Law Dictionary is for black magic, casting spells to manipulate the mind. They're narcissistic fuckers. And if you don't believe me, go look at Black's Law, first, second, third, and fourth edition, and go through it, pick out a few words, and then jump into... 8, 9, 10, and I think they just came out with the 11th edition of Black's Law Dictionary. Now, in some aspects, they will just simply remove the word altogether from the dictionary. And in others, they will manipulate the word. They will change its defining characteristics. They may move a comma in the sentence structure or a period which alters the entire intent of what is being spoken or what has been written, okay, and changes the meaning of of the word for example understand means to stand under somebody else it does not mean that you comprehend it means you stand under their authority okay <clears throat> when you understand the republic side of the venue the private side of the venue where all your rights are article 1 section 10 is where your bundle of rights are held Okay? And they're directly tied to the land, not the soil, not the dirt, the land. 
the law of the motherfucking land, which is where your bundle of rights are attached to. From the dirt you come and to the dirt you will fucking return. All right? You are a land mass. You are made from the earth. The mud of Lucifer and the breath of God, which is a perpetual conflict of interest. It's what Jesus Christ was put down here for. To show remedy, equitable remedy, to, perf to perfect the mistake, to correct it, if you will. All right? <clears throat> which tells us that if we create a problem, we have an obligation to correct it. Which leads me to the maximum. He who provides the ends also provides the means. If I want you to build me a house... And you show up at Monday at 7 a.m. and the guys are on site and I don't have any of your materials there. Do I owe you for a day's worth of labor for five guys and yourself? Remember, we had an agreement, a contract. You'd be there on Monday, 7 a.m. You guys would start building my house. But guess who fucked up and dropped the ball? This guy, right? So he who provides the ends provides the means. And because I didn't provide the means for them to get to work to erect the house, guess what? I just incurred a liability. I just incurred an obligation. A debt just arose from that. Should my mistake become another man's burden or am I responsible for providing the remedy? And the only remedy is, sorry guys, take the day off. Here's a day's pay for all of you. Sorry about not having the materials here today. All right, I'm not here for excuses. I'm not here for anything else. Here's the fucking remedy. You've been paid. Go fishing. Go fuck off for the day. Enjoy your life. Sorry about my mistake. I hope you can forgive me. But to make it right with you, what what were each one of you going to make today? I'll pay you out of pocket because it's my fault. It's my mistake. So I have to provide the remedy because I created the fucking problem. Whether it was gross negligence or, you know, whatever the case may be, it was still my responsibility and my obligation. Does that make sense? I hope that's making sense to you guys. In 1871, there was a, a Reorganization Act, all right? And people go, oh, that's fraud. They didn't have the power to do that. Blah, 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 blah. It's all bullshit. They absolutely had the power to do that, all right? Why? Because we have the fucking power to do that. Remember, these people don't have any more fucking power than you do. It's time you guys pull your heads out of your ass, take your thumb out of your mouth, and, and fucking listen. <laughs> the bottom line is... No man has more authority than you do. My rights stop where yours begin. If I don't have a right to steal from my neighbor, then 540 fucking congressmen or government officials don't have the right to authorize stealing from my neighbor. All right? Theft is theft. It's a common law tort. Okay? There's an aggrieved party. A man caused harm, damage, and loss. You notice I didn't mention the word injury? Because injury is statutory. Injury is the commercial venue. Your person can suffer an injury, right? And suffer is a wrong word to use too because suffer means to volunteer. How do I know that? Well, it says in the Bible, ladies and gentlemen, my people will suffer for their lack of fucking knowledge. He doesn't say because they can never obtain the knowledge. He doesn't say because I never granted them the ability to acquire the knowledge. He says they will suffer for their lack, which means with your free will, you have the opportunity to go out there and seek the truth. And truth is an opinion, so I fucked up again. The real word about it is true. What is true? What is true is a fact. Truth is an opinion. So we have to go back through the study etymology of language and words. And believe it or not, I got straight F's all through fucking school. My, uh, me being in school was about people trying to lord over me. And I just, I had zero fucking tolerance for that shit. Zero. When I would ask teachers a question and they didn't have the answer. And yet they're supposed to be all powerful, all knowing. Went to college. They're, they're here to help me learn and ascend to the mind. And I ask them a simple question. And instead they go, you need to focus on the subject matter we're talking about. Well, fuck you should know this one too. Fuck's your problem, Scooter. I already know the answer to your fucking homework assignment. I just, I'm not going to do it because I've, I've lost respect for you people. 
You know, instead of pointing me in the right direction of things to look at and things to study and maybe pique my interest, you have bored me to death with your fucking babysitting club for which I'd never make a fucking dime for. Only later on in life to find out that everybody pays for their own education. Everybody does. <laughs> Through the Social Security account. That's why there's an application to go to public school. All applications are security obligations of the United States. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Let that sink, sink in for a moment. They have monetized every fucking aspect of your life. Every aspect. Which brings me back to equity again. Pomeroy. All right? Pomeroy. When, when two rights occur in the same person, it is though they are two separate persons. He didn't say people. He didn't say man. Persons. Very specific. Lays it out there. Trust law. So you have equitable rights and legal rights. And when equitable and legal merge together under the doctrine of merger, you have a trust that has been collapsed. And the one who has merged the equitable and legal title, pay attention, you've merged the equitable and legal title has successfully collapsed the trust and becomes grantee absolute. Means the trust needs to be liquidated and all the assets, profits, proceeds, futures, annuities, interests, dividends, derivatives, pediments, general tangibles, all need to be rightfully vested back in that one person, not a man, it's a person, it's a trust. That's why they tell you to control everything and own nothing. I own nothing and my life has never been fucking sweeter. It's neater than a Skeeter's Peter to finally give it all up, all the horse shit that they forced down your throat through the TV and the radio and the hip hop music and all this other shit. Oh, you gotta have a big house and 50, 50 chicks with big titties and, and a boat. You gotta have boats and hoes. Soon as you give up that fucking ideology and frame of mind and, and, and uh, you start looking at what is true and not the truth that they've put out there for you to absorb and believe in, belief being the lack of knowledge, you'll be so much better off. So much better off. Does that mean I don't get to enjoy great things and nice things while I'm here? No, it doesn't. See? <clears throat> Under the Trading with the Enemy Act, the Federal Reserve Banking Act, okay, the Securities Exchange Act of 1933, amended in 1934, Title 18, Subsection 8, the Trust Indenture Act, I believe that was, again, in 1934. You start to realize that it's a big trust and what part, what role you play in this trust. The problems disappear. Now we got to go back to morality. Got to get back into the Bible again because people are like, oh, I want a $5 million house. Oh, I want to, I want to, first of all, what the fuck does a $5 million house even mean? What is $5 million? $5 million of what? See, they've got you in this fucking facade where you actually give value to things based on instruments of fucking debt that are worthless. People sell their fucking souls for worthless fucking paper. Yeah. Think about that. Think about that. You got lawyers out there that have sold their souls to the fucking devil while they're causing harm, damage, and loss to their fellow brothers and sisters while violating the constitution of this great land. And it's not even just this great land. If you look at the sound doctrines and principles within the constitution, they follow international fucking law. It applies everywhere. People go, oh, the 14th Amendment freed the slaves. Motherfuckers, read your history books. The treaty again abolished fucking slavery long before that 
And if you start studying the fucking palpables issued by the Catholic fucking diocese, the Roman Catholic Church, you'll find out that they abolished fucking slavery in the 1600s. That's right. For you Catholic yuppies out there, your religion. Ugh. Fuck. I'm not religious. I'm very spiritual. I'm far from fucking religious. But I know how to read between the lines and the parables and the books. It's a gift. Or maybe it's a fucking curse. Maybe it's a curse. It's not really a fucking gift. Because I wander around this earth trying to figure out why nobody else is able to see this shit. And it's right there in our fucking face. But it's a conditioning of the mind. The Jesuits said, give me a boy for seven, seven days or seven years and I'll show you a fucking man. They weren't lying. You manipulate a young mind, a young, impressionable, creative mind in the first seven years of their life, and you have pretty much fucked them. You can make them think any way you want. Why do you think they're pushing pedophilia in the fucking schools? Grade school, kindergarten, third graders, second graders, fourth graders. That's right. Because in the next 15 years, it will be acceptable to fornicate with some young person, some young man or woman, some baby boy or baby girl who's not even cognitive enough to make a conscious decision of whether or not it's acceptable or enjoyable or otherwise. That's how sick and twisted these motherfuckers are. It's an evil that plagues this earth. It's never going anywhere. You can't have good without evil. You can't have fucking happiness without sorrow. All right? You have to have the full array of spectrum in order to ascend of the mind and comprehend what your purpose is here. If, if, if your ideology is, I want everything for free, I'm going to tell you right now, this knowledge that I've acquired, there wasn't a fucking single bit of it that was free. I spent time in prison. I've been in fucking jail. I've been in and out of cuffs so many fucking times. I can't even fucking count. I've had fist fights and wrestling matches with fucking police officers in the middle of courtrooms. <laughs> Fuck. This fucking information wasn't free. Anything but. Anything but free. It's taken a toll on me emotionally. Hell, there was a couple times I swallowed my fucking pistol for fuck's sake. And the only thing that stopped me from doing it was thinking of my little daughter. That was it. She needs me. This world's far too sinister to leave her fucking alone. And maybe that's why he put her here. Maybe that's why he blessed me with her. To give me a purpose. To give me the will to keep pushing on. Because if it wasn't for her, I wouldn't fucking be here. No desire to be in this sinister fucking shithole. But there's hope. People are starting to come out of their slumber. They're starting to wake up. They're starting to see the truth. And at this point, they're going to try to manipulate the system again. Which is fine. That's what they do. And I put it this way. The government does nothing without first robbing Peter to pay fucking Paul. They have done nothing constructive ever, ever. We as man created government to protect our rights and to benefit us. We are the masters. We are the alpha. We are the motherfucking omega in the hierarchy of the food chain as far as man, government, corporations, persons, legal fiction and entities, trusts, all that shit is below man, except for the covenant issued by God. So we're subservient to God. We exhibit sovereignty because there's only one true sovereign. He who creates is fucking master. End of fucking story. So instead of arguing the name game in a court, maybe ask the question, where the fuck did you get your authority to lord over me, motherfucker? Huh? Which one of you motherfuckers got the authority from another man claiming that I've caused them a harm, damage, or a loss? And when was I properly fucking given notice to provide remedy? Because I am an honorable fucking man. That's right. I got the testicle four for two to sound off and say it loud and say it fucking proud. If I've done wrong, you get a hold of me. I may be an asshole, but I'm an honorable asshole. And if I've done wrong... All you need to do is explain it to me, and I will do whatever it takes to make it right. But yet they pull you into these courts, and because you don't have the heart or the knowledge to think 
in that capacity, you want to argue the fucking semantics. Nobody gives a fuck about the semantics. In fact, you're just acquiescing to the problem. Title 18, subsection 8. All obligations are obligations of the United States. In 1935, the U.S. Supreme Court. In 1935, the U.S. Supreme Court came out and got on the politicians' asses and said, "Look, what you motherfuckers did in '33? Woo! Yeah, that's blatant fucking treason. That's uh, robbery upon the shore. You, you engaged in open theft of the people's wherewithal." You took something of value and you have provided you have provided no remedy. And because you provided no remedy, you've essentially cast all the people into peonage while openly engaging in slave trade and theft by taking. What was the other option? Ah, a trust manifest. Something of value was given to them so they could do business. And what were they to do for us in return? Cut us in on our cut, on our share of United States Inc., ladies and gentlemen. Follow me for a second. I'm going to show it to you. The Secretary of State of any of the 50 fucking states is a subsidiary of the Secretary of State for the United States. All right? That means every business that's registered with all 50 secretaries of state you have a fucking interest in. Well, how's that possible? How's that possible? Because none of that shit would exist if they didn't take your gold and fucking silver. Everything would still be private instead of public, commercial, Fortune 500 fucking corporation. What does Fortune 500 corporation have? Stockholders, investors, and what do they get? Dividends, derivatives, all right, futures, annuities from the production of the successful corporation, right? What evidence do you have that you're a preferred fucking stockholder and the world's largest motherfucking corporation? What evidence do you have? Birth certificate's a bill of laden. It's also a warehouse receipt. A receipt is what? Proof of chain of title, right? To what though? A general intangible. A right that you have in interest in said constructive corporation. Everybody's like, oh, how do we get the pot of gold? You are the motherfucking pot of gold. I keep warning people, it ain't going to be much longer. I'm going to disappear. Abra motherfucking Kadabra. Now, I'll give you guys as much fucking knowledge as I can give to you guys before I do it. There's no need for me to sign an NDA. I've worked my ass off to get this fucking far. <clears throat> it didn't come free. These people keep fucking harping on me. Oh, yeah, you get all this for free. None of this shit came for free. Now, people that talk to me like that, it just bothers me. It bothers me on this aspect. That they'll never be able to ascend to the mind because they're so busy thinking about value in the context of paper. The paper isn't the fucking value. It's your brilliant fucking mind. It's your life source energy. It's your attitude and aptitude in order to achieve, overcome, and, and, and uh, adapt. Or adapt, overcome, and achieve. You know, there's this thing I read about. It's called the rods of God. God put the government on the earth. You read the Bible, it says that. God put the government on the earth. And then I started reading about the rods of God. Why he would allow evil to manifest. And it was to lead us back home. To shake our conscience. Because he gave us free will. And free will means we have a right to choose. Well... United States, Inc., Washington, D.C., Title 28, 3002, 15A, has not violated your fucking right to choose. They haven't. 
is, for example, I can be in any lobby at any hotel and ask people, hey, where's the law that says that we have to pay taxes? And they go, oh, well, everybody knows you have to pay taxes. Man, you, what are you, one of them sovereign citizens? And I'm like, no, I'm just asking a question. I mean, has anybody ever shown you the law? Well, Derek, uh, everybody knows. No, everybody presumes and motherfucking assumes is what they're doing. That's dangerous. Walk into a gas plant and just presume and assume that it's a water plant while you're smoking a cigarette. Let me know how well that works out for you. And then want to cry because you fucking got blown up. You got third degree burns on your pecker. The well, fuck? All you had to do was stop and read. Because they literally put it out there in their publications before the entire fucking world. They tell us all exactly what they've done, exactly how it was constructed. And yes, they use a manipulation of language in order to explain it. Because in their grand scheme of education, they limited you. They capped everybody at about a fifth grade reading level. And I'm telling you, all through school I got F's. Not... Because I wasn't intelligent. Not because I couldn't fucking do the work or comprehend things. And I just didn't feel the need to apply myself. It was mundane. It was fucking ridiculous. And I didn't see anything good from coming out of going to an educational program. That's what it is. Like television. It's a television programming box. To program your mind to think a certain way and limit you to that of a mental capacity of about a 13 year old child all the newspapers throughout the world are written at a fifth grade fucking level you think that's an accident you think that's just a coincidence you know in order to get a driver's license in chicago they've 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 demoted to using pictures and, and signs and images because they know most of their population can't fucking read there's that equal protection of the law thing that comes in there. You go, well, fuck, can't read, so we got to give them fucking picture books. What does it, this eight-sided uh, 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 symbol convey to you? Oh, that means stop. Do you know what it's called? No, nope, I, I just know that that means stop. It's an octagon, right? <clears throat> but if you read in Illinois... Their DMV manual and shit, you'll see it's just littered with pictures. Littered with pictures and graphs and all this shit. Versus in Nebraska, it's all fucking words. There ain't no fucking pictures in that fucking book. At least there wasn't when I was younger. It's all words. <clears throat> They're intentionally dumbing down people so they can keep the same scheme and scam going on. And the people that learn this have awesome fucking lives. You gotta give up the idea of physical possessions. And that's a tough one to overcome. People go, oh, don't you want nice shit? Look, I get to utilize nice shit all the time. All the fucking time. I just don't post it on here. Because it's not worth it. It gives the wrong image. I get a hold of, people get a hold of me and they go, oh, can you show me how to get a free car? Why? You'll lose it in fucking 30 days, 60 days, 90 days. You'll lose it. They'll send you a piece of paper. You'll fail to fucking respond. You'll acquiesce by tacit procreation. And bam, you'll be locked back into a fucking contract under presumption and assumption. You won't understand how to fucking combat it in a court before an actual judge who knows the law and absolutely will enforce the law. It took me a while to start liking some of these judges, but I'm starting to see some things. And my animosity towards them, well, it was uncalled for, to be honest. It was uncalled for. That was my lack of understanding, which led me to wanting to use brute force. And of course, that's always what people do when they lack the mental capacity to be able to comprehend what is being shown to them. So often we want to get angry. We want to respond emotionally instead of setting back and looking at the picture in a grander scope. There's been a couple... Uh, men who allege to be or purport to be judges, including women, that have sat on that bench and they have told me things and only in hindsight, after thinking about it for like six fucking months and reading and reading and reading, do I realize what they're showing me? And I'm like, damn, I was a fucking asshole. Fuck, they're looking at me like an infant crying for his bottle. 
Wine, 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 bitch, 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 bitch. And then, oh, here comes tough guy again. In reality, they actually gave me the fucking answer sitting right on the fucking bench. But my blind anger and, and emotions of hatred towards these people for taking advantage of others wouldn't let me see what they were showing me while they were sitting there right in the fucking courtroom. Peanut gallery full of fucking people. And they were giving me remedy and I couldn't fucking see it because I, I wanted to be right about something. I wanted, I wanted them to acknowledge the way I say it. Fuck the way you say it. In your negative, dispositive statements. Yeah, write it down. Dispositive statements. When you're reading court cases, you need to look at them and their conclusions and what they're saying. Most often, they're in dispositive statements, which causes our brain to look at it and go, this doesn't make any fucking sense at all. At all. Because it's a dispositive statement. And it is actually telling you something, but in a way that your brain is not familiar with. I don't know how to teach people that. I don't know how to show people that. It's not something that was really taught to me. It was something after years and years and years and years of fucking reading. And somebody saying, Derek, have you, do you know what a dispositive statement is? Uh-uh. All right, well... Look at this ruling and tell me what you think. And I was like, fuck, obviously that guy's off his fucking rocker. This guy has a right. He's like, he does have a right. And in that dispositive statement, he's affirming that he has that right. And I go, where the fuck do you see that? And he goes, look at the words, read it again. Call me when you figure it out. That's, that's my mentors. Gotta love those guys. Fucking, sometimes I, I take a deep breath and go, fucking assholes. Fucking prick. Why won't you just tell me? Give it to me. You know. You owe me. Tell me. Yeah, ego gets in the way. But the thing is, even if they told me, I still wouldn't fucking quite understand it. It's, it's only until you ascend to the mind, you'll be able to enforce the stuff that I talk about. You have to know it. You have to know it in your heart. Know it to be true and be able to express it, whether it be orally, in written form, sign language, whatever the case may be. So write down dispositive statements and start studying them. Because you're going to have to retrain your brain to be able to see it. Because equity acts in the negative. They don't say, yeah, you can go to the park. They say something along the lines of, I don't see any evidence that you can't. Well, I want to know. You need to tell me directly, yes or no. They just did give you an answer. They just gave you the fucking answer. I don't see any evidence. This court doesn't see any evidence that one can't. Well, you're not telling me yes or no. That's because you have a right to make a fucking decision for yourself. So you can accept the offer of this court or you can throw a fucking fit and uh, equity will not perfect an imperfect gift and you can be led to believe in your mind that you don't have the authority because I didn't give it to you. <laughs> you either have a right to fucking do something or you do not. Period. Cut and fucking dry. And no man tells you what you can and can't do. Only other men who have a notion that you have violated their right in some capacity, have the ability to stop you or get redress of grievance. That's why the Fourth, Fifth, and Sixth Amendment and First Amendment are so important. And then, of course, everybody forgets about 8, 9, and 10. You don't ever hear anybody talking about 8, 9, and 10. Anyway, maybe coming on here and just ranting and raving is... Probably not in the best light. I don't know. I don't know what else to do. I got. Was reading through some questions and inquiries that are being sent my way. I get hundreds of Facebook messages, hundreds of fucking emails, phone calls, all kinds of shit, text messages, all day, every day of all these problems. And the story is always the same. It doesn't even matter if the story isn't verbatim. It's always the same thing. They're fucking me. They're fucking me. And I keep telling people. When I finally started to ascend to the mind is when I woke up one day fucking from a dead sleep 
sat up in the middle of the fucking night, jumped out of bed, went to the mirror and looked in the fucking mirror and realized I'm the problem. It's not them. It's me. Holy fuck me running. The whole time, the answer was me. Not anybody else. Not pointing a finger at everybody else going, oh, it's all their fault. Not their fault. My way of thinking. Not knowing how to stand for what is right, true, correct, with authority. And comprehending where that authority comes from. For all you guys with the fucking traffic issues of fucking registering your automobile, do me a favor. No, no, no. Fuck me. Do yourself a favor. Just look at the judge and the prosecutor. I want you to put it in fucking writing too. All right? Is an interrogatory. Not an interlocutory appeal. Interrogatories. It's a question. I want you to formulate it for the judge and the prosecutor. Two separate pieces of fucking paper. And ask them if either one of them in their official capacity, or in their personal capacity, or in their pers uh, professional capacity, assuming full criminal, professional, and civil liability, can order you to contract with the DMV. Watch what happens. Just watch what happens. Now, the judge is probably going to respond to you in a dispositive statement, which will lead you to believe that he hasn't given you an answer, so you're in limbo, you don't really know. And of course, the prosecutor's gonna say, absolutely, you have to. Let me remind you something. The judge is allowed to lie to you. Prosecutor's definitely a motherfucking liar. I can prove that lawyers are liars. How? Because they breathe, and when they flap them fucking gums, they're lying. All right? <laughs> Had that argument with the judge one time, he was fucking Tickled pink, laughing his ass off off the bench, yet still trying to keep his composure. So, you know, things didn't get too far out of hand with me. You let me have too many George Carlin moments in the fucking uh, peanut gallery. It starts to expand immensely. People just want to, you know, people come to the court cases that I have going on for one thing and one thing only. They want to see the crash. Same reason they go to fucking watch NASCAR. They want to see a crash happen. Nobody goes to NASCAR to watch... 400 fucking cars go round and round and round 400 fucking laps successfully. Everybody's there to watch when somebody fucking spills, burns, crashes, fucking. That's why people go to NASCAR. They want to see the carnage. You give a fuck who takes first place going round and round and round, watch like a dog in a fucking living room chasing his fucking tail. Who gives a shit about that? Nobody. They're there for the carnage. Same reason people come to the courtroom to watch me. They want to see me get stabbed, batoned, pepper sprayed, tased, and fucking hauled off in cuffs. Ha <laughs> ha! See? Y'all better listen to your masters. You'll end up like that guy who thought he knew something. <laughs> so many spectators have come into courts and watched me do what I do. And some of them actually fucking have this putrid, vile hatred for me. And when I walk out of the courtroom, they're fucking pissed looking at everybody going, yeah, he's just, they just, yeah, he's just so slick with the way he talks and he's a manipulator and blah, 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 blah. And they never understand the conversation that actually happened between me and the, the man sitting on the bench. They never get it. They miss it in its entirety. The poignant points, the sound doctrines, the principles utilized, even though I'm a complete asshole when I do it, which isn't necessarily equitable. But only a belligerent has fucking rights, ladies and gentlemen. Only a belligerent's rights are recognized. So if you fight with conviction, maybe your language is unbecoming of that who would be with such prestige, you know? But <clears throat> when you look at it, only a belligerent has rights. Real simple stuff, guys. Real fucking simple. It's so simple, it's elementary. And the reason it's hard for you to see it is your indoctrination. You can't pay anything. So stop using the word I paid. It's like calling a woman a C word. You probably end up with no teeth left and your dick in the dirt if you keep on using the C word with everybody. All right?
It's like the word you. It's an accusatory thing. Walk into a military bar and go, you, 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 and, 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 and see if somebody doesn't knock your dick in the dirt and oblige you. You is accusatory, all right? <clears throat> pay, the word pay is the same thing. It's a bad word. It's just like the C word. Every time you feel the notion to say pay, I want you to go put some liquid Dawn dish soap in your fucking mouth because it's a bad word. I don't ever want you using it again. And I know you little fuckers are crafty, and if I told you to use a bar of soap, you would just hold it with your teeth, because you're just as intelligent as I am. And that's the shit I used to pull with my mother, and then she brought out the old Dawn dish soap. My language, believe it or not, for a few years, cleaned up a little bit, or I was blowing bubbles while I was cussing, which happened from time to time. Anyway, long story short, you can't pay for a fucking thing. Nothing. It's already been paid for. Blood of Jesus Christ was the symbolism of that. Debts and sin are synonymous. They're the same fucking thing. It's all been paid for. It's all done. Well, Derek, what language do we use then when we're trying to convey that we have an interest? Oh, shit. Somebody's been reading a book. What What'd you say again? What? language would we use to convey that we have an interest in said property there we go now we're fucking talking now we're cooking with fucking crisco that's that's the language those are the words that are going to help you make your point not get what you want make your fucking point because it's the law I, for one, tender an instrument for set off and discharge. And I have an interest in that application, a.k.a. government obligation, known as a security obligation of the United States, Inc. Well, that sounds great, Dirk. How do you prove it? Is there anybody in here that's going to say... That I didn't. Let the record reflect. Nobody in here is objecting. We'll go ahead and stipulate to the facts on the record now, unless there's an objection. Give me a hey, 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 b b b b hey 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 twenty five twenty five thirty five thirty five nope 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 yep 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 all done. All right, no objections. Pouring on the official record. Let the record reflect. Nobody has objected. We've stipulated to a fact that has now been created. I want that fact on record. I tendered a application for set off and discharge. Discharge has a different connotation than set off. Set off is actually proper. Discharge passes the obligation to future generations. You really need to stop doing the discharge thing. That's a bad fucking thing. You're not balancing the books. You're not zeroing out the fucking accounts. With a discharge. You're just passing it on. And then the Bible tells us that the offspring will pay for the sins of the father. Oh, fuck. I just love it when it comes together biblically. I'm not a preacher. Not a rabbi. Never been to Jerusalem. Haven't studied with the monks. Haven't studied with the Jews. I... <clears throat> if I told you where I got the knowledge, none of you'd believe me anyway. Wouldn't matter. Doesn't matter. <laughs> 16 days in prison with a Bible was one of the most beneficial things that has ever happened to me in my life. I had an attorney go, are you going to sue them all? I go, why? Well, you know, what they did was wrong. I said, sure, so sue them. Sue on my behalf. I'll give you power of attorney. Go ahead. Oh, I'm not going to do it. Yeah, because you're not going to shit where you fucking sleep. I'm not fucking stupid. But why would I sue? What's my reason for it? The illustrious dollar? The elusive dollar? Fuck, I can write my own fucking notes. Fuck, I care about your fucking Federal Reserve notes. Right? And people go, oh, well, you, you, you charge a small fee for your class. I didn't say Federal Reserve notes are worthless. People believe in them. They're used for exchange. And one day, they'll be floating down the road by the fucking billions... 
and nobody will stop to wipe their ass with them. Just like Venezuela. Meaningless paper. And the only thing that gives it any fucking value is the fact that people tend to use it in exchanges as a medium of exchange. So although they're an instrument of debt, because the people utilize them out of necessity, in my opinion, I'd much rather use gold and silver. In fact, when I do classes, I even offer that as a way of joining. Hey, <laughs> I'd, I'd, you want to send six silver coins, 0.999, minted, whether it be the U.S. Mint, the Canadian fucking coins, the fucking Japanese or Chinese coins, as long as it's 999 pier, we're good to go. <clears throat> yep. Heretics, lunatics, and heathens. That's what everybody's presumed and assumed to be. Heretics, lunatics, and heathens. You've been led to believe that idiot's a bad word. It's not. It's not. Idioso. It's not a bad word at all. It simply means I don't comprehend your legalese, lying, manipulative fucking bullshit. And because I don't proclaim to understand or stand under it, means that we don't have a meeting of the minds. Jurisdiction has not been established. The law of the words. And until we can come to some type of agreement that's mutually beneficial for all parties involved, that isn't devoid of due process under the doctrine of void for vagueness, then we can't possibly have any binding contract at all. That makes sense? If I write in Japanese and a woman halfway across the world is writing in Spangladesh, part Spanish, part English, part French, which is exactly what they do in the courtrooms, by the way. <laughs> they use Latin, French, and English. And a bastardized version of English, by the way. Because <clears throat> you don't spell labor L-A-B-O-R. It's L-A-B-O-U-R. Labor. Just pointing some shit out to you guys. I posted some stuff earlier on Facebook. If you care to do so, go have a look at it and read it. Read it. And I understand and comprehend that the first time you read it, you're not going to know what it says. And that's okay. So long as you don't draw a conclusion. See, this is something Mr. Anonymous keeps getting on my ass about. You're always drawing conclusions, Derek. And conclusions limit your ability to expand your thinking and your mind. And when you draw a conclusion, it's dangerous. Because now you are with conviction in your heart that you know something. And that's something that you think you know may cause you great detriment in your life. So stay away from drawing the conclusions or drawing an inference from an inference. Can't be done. Drawing an inference from an inference doesn't make a fact. So conclusions are dangerous. So read it the first time just to read the words and be able to sound them out phonetically and, and speak them orally. And then read it again, retarded, slowed down, word for word. When you come to a word you don't comprehend, highlight it, copy it, paste it, and stick it in the fucking top of your search engine and go read it and the definition and then follow it all the way down in the chain of etymology to figure out its root. See, here's something nobody ever talks about. Root title. Where is root title? How many people are talking about root title? Where have you ever even heard anybody speak of root title? Paramount interest. Root title. <clears throat> I 
Title 15 is key. It's one of the most equitable titles I've ever seen. Title 1 USC 112 will give you your bearing. It's like a compass. It tells you what is recognized in all courts from the highest to the fucking lowest. And I'm going to tell you right now, the U.S. Supreme Court is not the highest court in the land. It's not. You're the highest court in the land. The second court with the most power, believe this shit or not, I don't give a fuck. It doesn't make any difference to me what you believe. I'm not here to change your fucking belief. Is a small claims court. That's the second highest court in the land next to your court. Then the Supreme Court. And it's not even the Supreme Court in Washington, D.C. That's the highest authority in the Supreme Court level. It's the Supreme Court of Pennsylvania. Has the highest authority. The King's Bench, as far as Supreme Courts go. You could drag every public official to fucking Delaware. And drag their happy asses into court. Because they're a Delaware corporation. Could you imagine the fucking look on the face of a fucking sheriff while you're dragging his ass to Delaware to fucking prosecute him? I don't know why I have to go to Delaware. And all the lawyers go, oh, you don't have to go there. That's bullshit. No, just ignore that. Yeah, go ahead and ignore that. Lose your house, lose your wife, lose your cat, lose your goldfish. Fuck away your kids' college funds that you've saved for them. Because I tell you what, you get invited to Delaware by a guy like me and you don't show up. That's exactly what I'm moving the court for. Everything you thought you fucking owned. Then I'd give that shit away to charity because I can go get anything I fucking want. But the Bible tells me not to be gluttonous. Stay humble. Stay grounded. I need a fucking $5 million house, Derek. Again, what's, what's a $5 million house anyway? <clears throat> Federal Reserve notes. Only have value in the aspect that people use them. That's it. Otherwise, they're nothing any better than the Venezuelan fucking dollar. Or whatever the fuck they were using over there that was blowing down the road that they now make catchy purses out of. <clears throat> Something that was really cool about history... Everybody's like, oh, well, there's always been the gold dollar. Mm, yes and no. Started out as pesos, which is eight pieces of gold that created a dollar. That's where you get the peso symbol for. And when you actually learn that peso has been shortened down and condensed, so you don't understand that eight pieces is what fucking creates the dollar. <clears throat> <clears throat> and then it was put in Pirates of the Caribbean movie, which I found hilarious. Who's got the eighth piece? That's just laughing. That's funny how they stick it in your fucking face. The people who create movies, these people are fucking genius. They're savants too. They're just clever about hiding it. Right in plain sight. Blows my mind. Lilo and Stitch. Little girl runs up. See? And she's talking to the alien property custodian holder. Holy fuck me, shut running. And not only is it the alien property custodian holder, but it's literally the figure of a gray alien on a fucking spaceship. Granting protection by the International Galactic Space Force. <laughs> right in your fucking face. They put it in the kids' movies. They put it in Peter Pan. You know, the evil shadow that runs around. Your evil twin. Doing all the bad stuff. Yeah, Peter Pan gets blamed for everything his shadow does. The shadow's the birth certificate. It's the person running around doing all that naughty stuff. It's the one that's licensed to break the law. Because that's what a license is. That's why you need insurance. If you're a really good criminal, you never get an insurance ding. All right? But if you're a bad criminal and you get caught being a criminal, well, then you get dinged on your insurance and before long, they won't license you anymore. Because you're not any good at being a criminal. People go, oh, that sounds ludicrous, Derek. Oh, keep that frame of mind. Keep that mindset. It will not help you. <laughs> well, 
I hope you guys got something out of this rant. Start studying Title 15. Slow down when you fucking read it. And pay particular attention to the definitions of the words. And yes, I'm very well aware the first time you read it, you will be frustrated. It won't make any sense to you. Put the book down. Walk away from the computer. Give yourself a day or two. Come back. Fresh. Cup of coffee. And read it again. And understand that everything is about trust. The word consumer leads to natural person. Natural person is nothing more than the benefucking fishiary. Detour equals trustee. Set lore is a trustee or can be a beneficiary. So the settler is the drawer of the instrument. The drawee is the trustee responsible for making the payment. The drawer does the tendering and the drawee moves the credits on account. The grantor and the settler don't necessarily have to be vested in the same person. When two or more rights appear to be in the same person, it is as though they are two separate persons. So yes, can the grantor also be the settler? Sure. Is it necessary that the grantor and the settler be vested in the same person? No. Can the grantor be a beneficiary? Nope. Can the settler be a beneficiary? Absolutely. Can the settler also be a trustee? Sure. You bet. Under the doctrine of merger, when you merge equitable and legal rights, grant the absolute, collapses the trust, liquidates the trust. All of the assets, profits, proceeds, futures, annuities, interest, all have to go somewhere. They're all vested in that one person at that point that has complete control. When you collapse the trust, though, be weary. Because if you don't know what the fuck you're doing, the bankers will come in and steal it all from you. They'll steal every last fucking thing that you accomplished because you didn't know what you did when you did it. And you didn't know how to protect it. So it's not always wise to collapse the trust. The trustee is present and the beneficiaries are known. It's not always bad to be a trustee. Beneficiary doesn't have any right to fucking give orders, give directives. They're merely a beneficiary. Let me put it to you like this. Let's, let's say I'm the trustee of your trust, your father or mother left behind for you, all right? <clears throat> and like most silver spoon fed brats, comes home one night, drunker than fucking 10 sailors, he says, hey, I need keys to Lamborghini. For what? Well, there's some women down there at the bar. I'm going to go see if I can bring one home. Well, that's all fine and dandy, but you're going to have to fucking call Uber, kid. Oh, you're going to listen to me? I'm the beneficiary. You're the fucking trustee. You do what I tell you to do. Ah, ah, your cocky, pompous fucking ego has fist fucked you yet again. You see, because I'm the trustee charged with the duty of protecting the assets of the estate. I owe you no duty, no obligation. You can't force me or compel me to fucking perform. And because you're inebriated, guess what, Scooter? Get a fucking Uber. You're not getting the keys. Because I'm not going to be derelict in my duty as a trustee and give you the keys and allow you to compromise the trust or the assets of the estate by wrecking into somebody while you're fucking inebriated, allowing them to pierce the veil of the trust, making me 100%
culpable and liable. Not going to do it. Sorry, everybody wanting to appoint the judge's trustee. Mm, got news for you. Got news for you. You come in there being the beneficiary and you're pointing them the trustee, you are fist fucking yourself dry. It's not the judge that did it. You did it. You did it. <clears throat> How do you fix it? Like I said, I don't mind being a trustee. There are times being a trustee is the fucking only thing to be. And if I make the announcement that the beneficiaries are known, ladies and gentlemen, that only leaves one fucking position for the prosecutor and the judge to fight over. And that's who's going to hold that hot potato and foot the fucking bill. <laughs> who's going to be the, the, the draw E and write the check? Settle the accounts. Pay the taxes. Right? That's why that works. If you remove the two positions, there's only one other fucking position there is. Executor Dizon Tort. The one with the liability. The trustor. Responsible for paying. The trustee... Just merely gives the trustor the instructions and in how to do it. That's it. It's that simple. If the trustor fails to do his job, well, then the trustor loses his pension, gets removed from the fucking bench, loses his bar card and his fucking job. <clears throat> gets hit with his insurance. Trust and equity. Yep. You bet, Andy. How's things going over there in Australia, brother? Good to see you on here, man. It's been a while. Uh, I've been studying so much, I really haven't made too many videos, and then I get bombarded by all these uh, people that are going through hardships, and my heart goes out to them. It really does. Now, I don't know any other way of conveying the fucking truth. So it's raw, it's rough, it's uncut, it's far from what anybody would perceive to be professional. I got invited one time down to uh, a college to, to come give a speech, and I'm like, yeah, right? That'll work real well for you, professor, because as soon as I show up and squawk and talk, your ass will get fired. And he's like, oh, I'm tenured. They can't fire me. Dude, they can do whatever the fuck they want, tenured or not. You bring a guy like me to your college fucking campus squawking and talking, and you will be relieved of your fucking duty and your position. This much, I can guarantee. <laughs> the first thing I'm going to start out with is how to set off your fucking college debt. See ya. Gone. I'm going to inspire your fucking students to delve in and do their own research and to walk away from the rhetoric that they're being taught in the public fool system. And teach them how to be in the fucking pendant. Maxims are great. I read a lot of court cases and, uh, it always tickles my fancy when I see these prestigious, illustrious fucking judges, if you will. People that have ascended of the mind. And then, and then their conclusions, they're using maxims. And I happen to recognize them because I read them all the time. Some maxims I agree with. Some I don't. Some resonate with my heart and I know them to be true. And I know that they are the law. While others seemingly are like a thorn in your fucking foot you can't reach while you're walking down the road. Those are the uh, Roman civil maxims. I listen to people bicker and argue all the time about maxims. Ah, these maxims, blah, 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 blah. That's, all, that's all commerce. No, it's not. Two different jurisdictions, two different fucking venues. They run concurrently, simultaneously, at the same motherfucking time. You can hold a court case, your own court, while they're running their court case. And your court case supersedes theirs. Why? Because you're the only one that can testify with first fucking hand knowledge to the facts. Agents and agency can't. They're barred from it. 
They have no knowledge of the facts. They speculate. They fabricate. <laughs> they manufacture crimes. Well, where do you get your enforcement, Derek? Pretty fucking simple. True bill doing owing. Notice of fault, notice of default, intent to sue, Neely DC. Said nothing. Stipulated to the facts. I just need you to sign this order. Oh, and if you wouldn't mind reviewing my private administrative process to ensure that I didn't miss anything, that proper service was given, that all parties were made consciously aware by, by documented evidence through the mail and the green return receipt and the 3817 yep looks like you did everything right what do you want me to do again just sign that order thank you well what is this this is a declaratory judgment stipulating the facts stated herein that are agreed to yep they agreed well I don't see that they agreed I don't give a fuck what you see I'm telling you they agreed they had their opportunity to come here and be heard. They didn't show up. And even their futile argument showing up a day late and a dollar short wouldn't make a bit of fucking difference unless, unless there was some extingent circumstance that I agreed to. For example, my mother was in the hospital. She's dying of cancer. Hey, say no more. Go be with your mother. I'm an equitable man with pure intentions. I completely comprehend that. I will not fault you for that. I will not allow this court to fault you for that. Go be with your fucking mom. End of discussion. No problem. I don't even need fucking proof. If you're going to lie about something like that, well, that's between you and the good Lord. But on my heart, it's written, if somebody makes a claim like that, you let it go. You're forgiven. We'll take up this issue, this matter at another time because a trespass remains a trespass until remedy is had. At this point, you've been duly informed that we have something that we need to speak about privately. And I'm going to put a hold on this court case until we can handle our discrepancy or the issue at hand. I am the original source issuer of all issue. Write it down and say it to yourself in the mirror. I am the original source issuer of all issue. It won't make any sense to you right now. Write it down. I'm going to say it one more time. I am the original source issuer of all issue. The day that you understand that simple statement is the day that you will be able to master creating whatever the fuck you want on this earth. And hopefully your intent is pure. And I have some big dreams about making sure people don't go to sleep at night without food in their bellies and I'm going to make that a fucking reality mark my words indoor greenhouses in every fucking county in every fucking community until I finally get called home do something good on this fucking planet and I don't even want a fucking bit of recognition for it my name won't be on the shit nothing like that nothing of the sort just knowing that I left this place better than I fucking found it will be enough for me. <clears throat> My mother always told me that. Leave the place better than you found it. When I was a little boy, I'd get invited over to people's houses. <laughs> She'd get calls. Your son is amazing. He did the dishes. He helped feed the horses. I mean, just awesome. She goes, that's funny. He did that? Really? Because he don't do that shit at my house. <laughs> <Fuck it. laughs> Thanks, Cindy, for selling me down the fucking river. Now I'm grounded for a week for not fucking helping out around the house. <laughs> uh, in the end, she was always proud. Leave things better than you find it, Derek. And we can make a lot of change in this world if we have that mindset and mentality. Let's make this place better than we found it. It can be fixed. The great thing is, everything that's broken has the potential to be something great. It's just a matter of applied effort.
Nothing more, nothing less. You have the ability to create monies of account. Go look up the word in Title 15. In between 1601 and 1693, the definition for account. And remember, you're the only one with the authority and the power to bestow upon an entity with trustees working on behalf of it to create an account. So whose accounts are they? Where'd they get the authority to use your private intellectual property to manifest those accounts? See, that's why Equifax is being sued right now for what? $340 billion or some astronomical fucking number? <laughs> oh, fuck. Because <clears throat> they were creating accounts without the fucking written consent and authority from the author. The author being the authority. Who do you think that is? Is it you? I don't know. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. can't tell people what they are. It's like it can't change their fucking beliefs. It's frustrating. Walk around with a wolf or ball bat. Hit everybody over the head. Bibbidi bobbidi boo and you're a creditor. And boom you're a consumer. And boom now you have the knowledge. Praise the Lord. Amen. Fuck today. Yep. <clears throat> but unfortunately that would be assault and battery. And I can't run around doing that. Although fuck it would be a good time. <clears throat> fuck I'd even be willing to wear a tutu if I was able to do it without fucking persecution son of a bitch it'd be a hell of a day can't tell you what you are you have to decide it for yourself and the proof is in the declaration and findings of congress Go read them, Title 15, 1601 through 1693. Go read them. It is to be liberally construed in the favor of the consumer natural person, which is the highest legal standing and status of the entity. It's not you. It's not you, the man. It's commerce. But you get to decide. Nowhere in there does it say some dipshit, lying, looting, pantering, piece of shit, motherfucking, cocksucking. Fuck. I think I made George Carlin proud in that moment. Lawyer does not get to decide that. No. No, 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 no. It's you. Free will. Free will. That he who wishes to be ignorant or remain ignorant. It's your fucking choice. Shit or get off the fucking pot or quit crying. It's your fucking choice. I've always said this my entire fucking life. Come to me with a problem, but bring three viable potential solutions. And out of the three viable solutions, maybe we'll pick one that works, or maybe we'll commingle the three viable solutions and we'll make it work and get remedy. Because otherwise, all you're effectively doing is bitching, and I ain't got fucking time for that shit. And quite frankly, Nobody else does either. Get your kids back from CPS. Bring a private claim against every last one of them lying, looting, pantering pieces of shit that have abducted your offspring, engaged in human trafficking, and charge their motherfucking asses up. Privately. Privately. Just give me your innocent explanation as to how you felt that you had a right to take something that didn't belong to you, which is my DNA, my offspring, my property, given to me by the Heavenly Father. Produce your fucking evidence and your facts supported by the law now, or you fucking admit to being engaged in human trafficking, and the theft of my property, the theft of my property, trumps human trafficking, by the way. 
Theft trumps every fucking statute. You're going to bring a claim? Bring a claim of theft. Oh, he, he, he resisted arrest. He didn't give me a driver's license. He didn't do this, that, and the other. And, and when we accosted him against his will, we took it out of his pocket. You mean you engaged in an act of theft while armed? And it was aggravated assault and battery. Thank you for your admission on the stand, dipshit. I want it noted for the record. Even though this isn't a court record, I want the fucking transcript because I'm going to take this motherfucker to the cleaners. Thank you for your admission under oath, stupid fuck. See how that works? The good Lord doesn't allow me to get pulled over anymore. I've tried. I pulled in front of cops doing 70 in a, in a 60. Just come on, come on. And they fuck get in the other lane and pull up next to me and look at me and then drive around me. I'm like, fuck, damn it. Thought I had one. I was out there fishing. I was just looking for a reason to clown one. The good Lord does. No, 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 Derek. Can't be doing that shit. Be on your best behavior. Don't be good looking for shit. But if somebody starts shit, well, then you can do your thing. <clears throat> So simple. All you got to do is ask yourself, what gives one man the right to lord over another? And when you come up with that answer, fucking hit me up. Call me up. Tell me how you derive that conclusion that another man has a right to tell you what the fuck to do. There's a bunch of presumptions and assumptions that they operate underneath and all the law has already been written since the beginning of fucking time and well perfected, there's no need to practice it, that destroys the rebuttable presumptions. For example, the presumption of a social compact that 7 billion people purportedly in the world have all agreed to. (laughs) Just show me... mm, One billion signatures from other men and women that have agreed to this alleged social contract. Just show them to me. Can't be done. Can't be done. Doesn't exist. It's a fallacy. Manipulation of the mind. And even if you could show me one billion people, do I not still have free will? Oh, I forgot this is a democracy where the fucking majority rule over the meek and the weak and decide for everybody else what's going to go on. You know what? I used to beat the fuck out of bullies for that mentality. I used to beat the fuck out of them. I wasn't a very big guy. I was just fucking mean. Meaner than a waspy fucking hornet, let me tell you. I fucking love scrapping. Biggest motherfucker in the school. I just was waiting, itching for the day. He'd sound off and get lippy with somebody else so I could just go up there and fucking jack his jaw. Now, becoming learned, ascending to another mind, you realize you don't even have to do it physically. Intellectually, you can smoke people, blow their fucking doors off, and you don't have to go to jail after you're done. It's fucking awesome. Super cool shit. You still get to have your dignity and respect, and and you get to cage and harness that fucking beast within from being destructive and causing you a whole fuck ton of liability. The most dangerous man in the world is the one that uses the weapon between his fucking ears. I'm going to tell you that right now. The most dangerous man in the world is the one that uses the weapon between his ears. It's not a gun. It's not a cannon. It's not a drone. It's not a 500-pound fucking bomb. It's a brain. It's critical thinking. Oh, good gravy. Oh, the hammock club. I want to join the hammock club, man. That's sweet. Anyway, I'm done ranting. I love you guys. I hope uh, this helps you along on your journey. And uh, I keep mentioning this class, but I strive for excellence. And I want to make sure that the knowledge I bestow upon you people is true, accurate, correct, and not fucking misleading in any way, shape, or form. I want to make sure that when I'm done with this fucking class, and it might blow into like a two or three week fucking 
deal where we have a class every weekend to finish it up because it is that extensive. Everything that I'm going through uh, since I started studying Title 15 has just opened up the path. <laughs> really has. It, it's remarkable. It was one of the key elements that I was missing. And, you know, the good Lord, he always provides. He always makes uh, or provides the opportunity when the time is right to ascend, to grow, to take you from the plateau that you've reached and to show you that your conclusions were wrong and give you the opportunity to see it for yourself. That's it. He just merely provides the opportunity. He doesn't will you one way or the other. Choice is always yours. So, with that said, I love you guys. I'll talk to you guys soon. And uh, appreciate your time. Keep your head up. Keep your shit wired tight. Your head on a fucking swivel. All right? Keep your head above water. The old commercial fucking antics that they preach. You know? Don't drown in debt. See a commerce language? Keep your head up. You're doing great. It's a learning curve. You're not going to get it overnight. You got to learn how to crawl before you walk. And you got to walk before you run. And when you learn how to run, then it's a matter of being humble and making wise, cognitive decisions on what you can do to help your fellow brothers and sisters to manifest something in this world greater than yourself that benefits future generations. It's really that simple. Leave a legacy behind. A legacy. <laughs>